news tonight. A top-level delegation from the Dominican Republic arrives in Antigua and Barbuda to pursue a number of major matters. A joint initiative is giving Slorosis patients a fresh chance at a normal life. And a new analysis this evening of the Great Six National Assessment. The ABS Evening News begins now. Local Evening News is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Uh, good evening, I'm Andy Leibert with the weekend edition of the Evening News here in ABS. Antigua's News Authority, a special welcome to those joining on our online platforms. A large, now for the details, a large contingent of senior officials from the Dominican Republic has arrived in Antigua for a number of major engagements. The delegation, led by the country's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Miguel Vargas, arrived by private jet at the VC Bird International Airport earlier this afternoon. Here's more. Antigua and Barbuda and the Dominican Republic share a very special relationship. And the records show that this was an important destination on the travel plans for Antiguans to find work decades ago. The relationship between the two countries has not waned since. And now, the Dominican Republic is looking to ensure that it grows from strength to strength. The delegation, met by Chief Protocol Officer Karen Cabral, has a number of important engagements. First of all, it will open the offices for a new embassy on Fraser Road, and the major plan is to construct a brand new one. Here's Vargas speaking to his interpreter, Ricardo Koenig, Consul General for Antigua and Barbuda in the Dominican Republic. The Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Mr. Gaston Brown, and the President of the Dominican Republic, Danilo Medina, have been having bilateral conversations and meetings, and one of the agreements among them was the establishment of an embassy of the Dominican Republic in Antigua. Antigua and Barbuda is home to a large population of natives from Santo Domingo. So Ambassador Raquel Jacobs is very happy that Minister Vargas is in Antigua ahead of the discussions that are expected to take place between Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown and Minister of Foreign Affairs E.P. Chet Green this weekend. I just want to say thank you to the government of Antigua and Barbuda for the cooperation and uh, to since the first day until today. After tomorrow, we have a lot of work to do here. So we'll keep in touch and uh, hope to cooperation also with Dominican Republic. How does it feel to have um, your minister? Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can express, <laughs> but very happy, of course. At the planned assigning sermon on Sunday, an agreement will be formalized that will establish an air services arrangement between the two countries. The officials will also be taken on tour of the area where the new embassy will be erected. Andy Leibert, reporting for ABS News. And now this, scoliosis patients in Antigua and Barbuda are benefiting from a major collaborative effort. The Rural Pediatric Project, along with the Ministry of Health, teamed up to host a scoliosis specialist clinic at Mount St. John's Medical Center. Last week, the hospital began with a screening which continued today, leading up to the clinic. Dr. Claudine Richardson says the goal of the clinic is to see as many children as possible who need a treatment for the condition. Rural Pediatric Project Director of the Scoliosis Program for the Caribbean, Dr. Chester Sharp, says the condition is very common. One out of 10 people have scoliosis, so it's extremely common. And one out of 1,000 people need surgery for scoliosis. Now, the doctor says the way scoliosis is treated depends on the size of the curvature and whether the spine is still growing. If uh, a curvature is under 20 degrees, then that's a watch thing. And if the curvature is over 20 degrees, then sometimes we use a brace with it. Brace is the only treatment that's had any effect on uh, halting the progression of scoliosis. And if the curvature gets over 45 degrees, then that becomes a surgical Problem. Now, with over 55 children seen in the last two weeks, uh, there is hope uh, they will be receiving much needed care 
and treatment through this collaboration with the World Pediatric Project. Meantime, parents are excited to have the World Pediatric Project collaborating with Mount St. John's Medical Center to bring the scoliosis clinic to the population here in Antigua and Barbuda. Now, ABS's Leah Novel has been following this. Meet parent Chanel Dowdy, who tells us about her daughter's story. It has been a while. Um, she has been, well, she was born with, um, with Blanche's disease, where one of her legs is, um, one is longer and the other one is one is longer and the other one is short, which causes her to walk a bit off. Mm -hmm. And as you know, sometimes children can be a bit cruel. So there are times when persons will stare at her and, you know, and she's growing up, she's 11. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to grow up to be that beautiful young lady where everything is intact. And um, being told about, the, about Dr. Yarwood, I came, I came here to the hospital and he has been following us. And now I am here with this initiative. I am so excited because it's we are like we are finally on the road to to getting her, you know, um, back to that that young lady that we we want to see her. Everything is back to normal. Here we see Gravella Clark, who has been diagnosed with the condition since her early teens. She's now 18 years old. She's here with her mother to see the doctors. Following her consultation, there's very positive news. I think you're in a great category. You're in the, it shouldn't bother you. It shouldn't have any ill health effects or anything like that. And you should just do fine. The clinic is open for all persons under the age of 21 years old who suffer with the condition and need to access treatment. Leah Norville reporting for ABS News. Now to other news, the grade 6 national assessment results was released on Friday and saw Janique Joseph of the Baptist Academy of Antigua at the top of the list with 379 out of a possible 400 marks. Now this evening, ABS News takes a closer look at the statistics of the grade 6 national assessment. The total number of students that underwent assessment was 1,354 students. Most females took the exams, some, hundred and, some 691 of them were the, was the total females and 663 males. Now in terms of the level of passes, the country saw more than 600 students in the level 1 category, 577 students in the level 2 category, while 168 students in the level 3 category and 8 students in the level 4. A record the Ministry of Education says is the lowest to date. In terms of performance within the subject area of language arts, the top score was 95%, with more than 1,000 students gaining 50% and above. In math, the highest score recorded was 99%, with 853 students scoring 50% and above. That's a major increase compared to 2018, when only 42% of students attained an acceptable grade. Science saw a top score of 98%, with over 1,000 students attaining acceptable grades, and social studies also saw over 1,000 students gaining 50% and more, with a top score for that subject area at 95%. Meanwhile, a student who attended primary school in Antigua is one of the top students in Dominica's grade 6 national assessment. 12-year-old Kaylee Darrow attended 5th grade at the St. John's Catholic Primary. Her 5th grade English teacher, Natisha Eli Grant, says Darrow was a persistent student. There were times, like every other child, that she would feel a little bit frustrated but she would continue to pursue. So she was always a persistent student and she wanted to get good grades. She wanted to do better each time. She usually scored within the 80s and the 90s. I'm also glad that her time spent at St. John's Catholic was very useful in ensuring that she was able to stay on par with her work and to go back to Dominica and excel in her exam. Now she wishes the student all the best in her future endeavors. And finally this evening, the Antigua Public Utilities Authority recognized its current longest serving employee, Keith Roy George, for 41 years of continued service and dedication, and Sandra Hunt, who is the first recipient of the General Manager's Award. Oh, that's Keith Roy Aishan George. 
Uh, many of you in the basketball fraternity would know him as Aishan. George has started his career at APUA on September 6, 1977, and just three years after the establishment of the, the Antigua Public Utilities Authority under the Public Utilities Act of Antigua and Barbuda. He was presented with an award and a token of appreciation at the APUA 46th anniversary Thanksgiving service earlier this week. Hunt is recognized for personifying this year's anniversary theme and for her loyalty to the company that goes above and beyond. The recognition of the two employees comes on the heels of the company's celebration of 46 years of operation under the theme Pride, Loyalty, Everyday, APUA. The Board of Commissioners, Minister of Public Utilities, Sir Robin Yearwood, and the management and staff of the authority are commemorating the milestone in this historic occasion of the authority. Well, uh, that's all for the national segment of our newscast. Uh, do stay with us. We've got sports coming up next. At Najiko, the things that matter to you